All right, ladies and gentlemen, today you'll be working on uh, the lab, since I won't be there to do anything else with you. And uh, no, the baby did not come, if that's what you're worried about. I'm, as you can hear from my voice, I'm I'm sick. Um, just had to stay home today, try to get better. So you're going to be doing the lab, and I kind of have a little setup on the screen for you here. You'll see here a motion sensor, a force sensor on top of a car, um, a track, make sure you click the motion sensor onto the track, um, and I'm really going to rely on you guys to ask each other for help on these things. If uh, you don't understand something, ask a group who knows what's going on. The green represents the bungee cords, and this is a ring stand. Um, a ring stand is actually a really good way to tie down your bungee cords. Remember, uh, we use those with the pendulum labs, you know where to find those. One note about bungee cords, you'll notice inside the white box that is on either my desk or the desk behind my computer, the bungee cords are inside cups. Every cup, except for one cup, has extra ones. Every cup has a set of four or five bungee cords. Do not mix and match the sets. If you pull one that has four cords, you're working with four cords. If you pull one with five cords, you're working with five cords. That said also, inside your cup, please put them away nicely. Do not tie knots in them. Treat them nice. They are bungee cords are very, very hard to untie a tight knot. You pretty much ruin the bungee cord doing it. So please, please be careful with that. So now, in terms of fixing the motion sensor to your car, or there's another way you can do it. You one way you can do it is you, they're in the uh, bin that has the bumpers in it in the back. There should be these long, um, long screws. You should be able to thread the screw through the motion sensor and the car. You'll notice in the red and blue cars, there are um, nuts inset into the car that you can thread a screw in there, and you don't have to worry about the force sensor moving. You have to make sure you have a hook on the force sensor. Um, every trial, you need to zero the force sensor no matter what you do. You must zero it. Now, in terms of hooking it up, one thing I have yet to create here, and that is for you, is the the power link box that you must use. The power link box has um, three connections on it. Sorry, I know it's crude looking. The power link box has three USB connections. That way you can run a cord from the force sensor and a cord from the motion sensor into the power link box together. From the power link boxes, you will have to get one USB cord that goes to your computer, and you'll have to get one power cord, and make sure you plug these into the right place. I've had people ruin them in the past because apparently they didn't know how to plug electricity in properly. But you'll have to have that in order to get two, um, two data readouts on one screen. The bin of power links should be in the back, uh, the back room there. Um, from my perspective, the back left, there should be uh, three bins stacked up there. Four sensors and power links should be there. Motion sensors are on the other side of the room, underneath the computers. Um, so you got that going on. You're going to want to launch the car. Now, what's going to happen is you'll start the car off. Don't grab that. You'll start the car off with the bungee cord being relaxed. Okay? The bungee cord will be relaxed in the beginning. You'll have the car here. The bungee cord will be relaxed. You'll shoot the car down the track. And the bungee cord will then stretch out. And then it will reverse the direction of the car back until it's loose again. That's what's going on. It doesn't matter if you vary the masses, if you vary the bungee cords, or you vary the launch speed. That will happen in all your trials. An alternate method of setting this up would be to have the force sensor itself on the ring stand. Sorry, the hook got displaced. Just have the force sensor on the ring stand, and uh, I don't know, get a paper clip or something, and make a, a bumper on the car itself to tie to and it would you'd have the bungee cord on the car itself this may be helpful if you are varying the mass of the car because you'll be able to stack masses on the car um, I find it easier to put the sensor on the car itself but you're gonna have to do whatever fits your lab 
the loops in the back of the force sensor would fit nicely on a ring stand. Looking at a computer readout. When you do a run, you'll get a line that looks kind of like this. You'll have a force sensor graph on top, or you know, force sensor graph and a motion sensor graph. I mean, they can be flip-flop, that doesn't matter. But what you'll see is this, uh, this line here. Kind of move this a little bit. Looking at the motion sensor part of it, in the trial that I record a picture of, the car had a constant speed, constant speed, it was, it was launched, and then right here, the bungee cord engaged and began to stretch. That bungee cord slowed the car down until it stopped, and then began to make the car go backwards up until this point. Okay, then the bungee cord slack again, the car went back to the motion sensor at a constant rate. Then if you look at the force sensor, you'll notice that there's no force acting on it, no force acting on it, and then all of a sudden, the, the bungee cord begins stretching, the force peaks, the car reverses direction, and it gets down to no force again when the bungee cords are loose. If I line this back up to right there, you'll notice why I had those circles. This point represents the place where the bungee cord began working. This is your VI. This place represents when the bungee cords were done working. That is your VF. Remember we've been talking about um, an event happening when we're talking about changes in momentum. The event here is the bungee cord engaging. The bungee cord engaged, slowed it down, reversed its direction, made it go back. Now, what you need to do is you need to get the area under this curve and how you do that is you highlight you click and drag like you do in, in a lot of things in the world you're gonna highlight like I'm kinda like doing here the area that was important now if you zero the, the trial out right here the force sensor should be reading a zero 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 until you can kinda see the gray under there it started to read forces Once you have this highlighted, look up above and there is a sigma. You should have a little pull down menu. When you click on the sigma with the pull down menu, you're going to select area and you'll get a little menu like this that pops up. You may need to turn your precision up. We did that last chapter. And to do that, you come over into the readouts over here where it kind of says graph and, 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 um, table and all that stuff over here where it says force up here I'm sorry I don't have a screenshot of that happening but where it says force up here if you double click on that that's how you adjust the precision and you'll notice that I gave it I don't know, like five digits of precision in the one I did because you're gonna have small changes in momentum because you're dealing with small objects okay I'm gonna depend on you guys to experiment to figure this out and lean on each other and help each other out. I will actually recommend that you save your data studio runs. If you have a successful run, hit save. You guys know how often data studio crashes. Save your data and then if we need to, I can come back with you when we get back from break and have lab again. I can look at your data with you and tell you if it's good or not. Okay, and help you manipulate it but I'm actually going to recommend that you save it. Okay? But the important pieces of data to record, of course, the mass of not just not just the car, but if you have the force sensor on top of the car, you need the mass of the force sensor as well. If you have a bolt in there, you need the mass of it because that is what is having its momentum changed. That is very very important. Okay? You guys are smart kids. You can figure it out. You can you can lean on each other and help each other out. Okay? Uh, good luck.